So guys, we're going to talk about this serious situation because it's not as clear as what people are thinking it to believe. And we're going to tell you what the mainstream media isn't. So this is going to be pretty full on. So strap in, pull up your eyelids with matchsticks and let's jump into the deep dive. So about a month ago, well actually exactly a month ago, Trump has offered to or has said that he wants to withdraw the forces from the Syria, declaring that we have won against ISIS. Now obviously this is interesting to most people because most people didn't even know we had troops in ISIS. But regardless, hey, it's not the first time that the US has been in a war that not everybody has exactly known about. But apart from that, Literally yesterday, four Americans were killed in an ISIS attack targeting U.S. forces in Syria. Now, the interesting thing about this is this is literally a month after Trump has said that he wants to pull out of Syria. This is not the first time that Trump has actually gone through and suggested this. He did say it earlier last year. But we had a few spots of chemical attacks and all of a sudden Trump then was forced to reconsider that decision. So, yeah, interesting enough, the uh, ISIS has decided to take the opportunity to go through and to bomb a, a place, leaving the Americans in Syria? But we'll get to that in a sec, don't worry. Now, obviously, the mainstream media is going through U.S. troops killed in suicide attack claimed by ISIS. Obviously, the mainstream media is going through trying their best to obviously keep Trump in Syria because the military industrial complex. Even going through saying that the map shows how ISIS continues to wreck carnage across the globe despite losing its caliphate. Now, obviously, the media is going through trying to make it sound like it's a real big thing, that ISIS are a big, bad, terrible threat, and which they are to a certain point. Um, but you don't just have the mainstream media doing it. You also have people like, for example, James Mattis, who quit because he didn't agree with Trump. Now, the main reason is because of him pulling out of Syria. Who would have thought a neocon been upset after the fact that the U.S. are pulling out of troops out of a war zone. But hey, maybe he's the only one. Uh, U.S. won't pull out of Syria without protection from Kurds, National Security Advisor John Bolton said. Huh. Seems to be another neocon still looking forward to the protection for uh, Syria. Hmm. It's, uh, it's weird, that, isn't it? Uh, but maybe there's only two of them, all right? Oh. Contradicting Bolt, Trump says no withdrawal from Syria until ISIS destroyed. Ah, interesting. Bolton seems to seems to want to uh, stay in Syria. Oh, I wonder why Bolton wants to be in Syria. Uh, and of course, he's not the only one. Marco Rubio has uh, gone through and made a major blunder on Syria. Senator Marco Rubio from Florida said President Trump is abandoning the effort in Syria before it's completely finished. Now, this is obviously back in December. Obviously, he's gone through this several times and said Syria exit is a catastrophe decision. And even just recently, obviously, Marco Rubio has gone through, doubled down, and said that top GOP senators hit back at Trump's Syria pullout without, uh, sorry, Trump's pullout Syria with sanctions bills. So, it, it seems like they, they just, they really want Trump to stay in Syria. I wonder who who might be financing this. I, I wonder who might have a, a vested interest into Syria. But regardless, let's keep going. Now, obviously, at the end of the day, Marco Rubio has then said, since ISIS has claimed credit for killing American troops in, ISIS, uh, in Syria today, if true, it's a tragic reminder that ISIS is not being defeated and transforming into a dangerous insurgency that you guys helped build, but regardless. This is no time to retreat from the fight against ISIS. We only embolden and strengthen them. Uh-huh. I wonder who we're emboldening and strengthening. But regardless, let's keep going. You know where I'm going with this, don't you? Obviously, Senator Graham warns Trump about Syria withdrawal following deadly bombing, and top Republicans urge Syria withdrawal delay after ISIS bombing. Well, isn't that convenient? The neocons in the mainstream media complex, I'm uh, sorry, mainstream media, sorry, I always get those two names mixed up. It's, they're so alike, aren't they? But the mainstream media complex and the mainstream media company 
and and uh, puppets want to want Trump to stay in Syria. I, I wonder who would benefit from Trump hanging around in Syria, right? But regardless, and this is something that Patterson Girl has actually breakingly said. Uh, breaking news, five U.S. soldiers die in attack designed to convince Trump to keep troops in Syria. They say it was ISIS, but who benefits? Israel, Bolton, the Kurds. In 2014, the Kurdish YGP were exposed for assassinating Christian leader David Dululo. They tried to claim it was ISIS. So it's not like there's a, a certain fraction over there, you know, the, the Kurds, you know, YGP, for example, uh, PG, who have a history of trying to set up suicide bombers or trying to set up martyrs for ISIS. But, you know, regardless. Now, obviously, Trump tells the GOP senators he's sticking to the Syria and Afghanistan pullout. Which is obviously making it very interesting. So let's break it all down. Let's tell you exactly what is happening. Okay, so the actual ISIS attack, where my mouse is, was actually up here in the Mambu, Manju, however it's pronounced, province. Right up here. This was the ISIS attack. This area has been clear of ISIS for over two years. Now, of course, it is the Kurds YGP, well, sorry, YPG and the VPJ and SDF. They own this area. This is their province, okay? This is the same Kurds YPG that in 2014 actually went through and tried to fake an ISIS attack. But, hey, maybe they're not lying this time, right? Now, the interesting thing is, this is one of the first areas that Trump wants to pull out of. And that just happens to be where the ISIS attack is. Mind you, the only area that ISIS actually controls is down here. Interesting. It, it seems to be a, a, a little way away. Seems to be a, a bit away from their, their controlled area, doesn't it? But regardless... Now, obviously, this is the uh, this is the American controlled areas. Um, so obviously, there's that. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, it's it's a little it's a little convenient, isn't it? That uh, Trump says he wants to uh, pull out of the uh, out of Syria, and all of a sudden, the uh, the military industrial complex gets a gets a bit of a win when uh, yeah, the uh, suicide bomber. Now, now, obviously, like we're saying, we're not saying it was the Kurds that tried to set this all up to give credit to ISIS so that the, the US troops would stay in there. But, you know, it's not like that's happened before. Um, but yeah, so look at the end of the day. What's my take? What's my view on this? To me, this is a false flag attack. It really, really is. Oh, look, okay. Is there a chance that there was some lone wolf ISIS who decided to go and bomb a cafe and blow himself up because of because? Sure. Why not? 20% yes. Fine. We'll give it 20% per, uh, percentage, right? 80% of this is me thinking that it is the Kurd YPG who have been caught in the past faking assassination attempts and whatnot have gone through and have actually done this because at the end of the day, it keeps the US troops in. Who benefits from that? The military industrial complex, uh, Israel, all these sort of people benefit from this. The, the only people who would actually suffer from the, the attack would be ISIS itself. At the moment, Trump is talking about pulling out of Syria. The, the, the ISIS is literally being hammered by Russia, Americans, um, all, all these sort of countries, right? One of the major players is talking about leaving Syria, and all of a sudden ISIS decides to keep them in the country, or to pull off a stunt, that would actually keep them in the country. Why? Because having mass amounts of death toll on your side is fun. If I was
was ISIS, if I was an ISIS fighter or an ISIS leader, I would be telling my guys to lay low. Lay low, let Trump pull out, let the Americans pull out of Syria, and then we can regroup and we can go through and we can get back to our old shenanigans. That would be what I would suggest. I wouldn't deliberately say, hey, the US is pulling out of Syria, why don't you go and poke the bear with a giant stick and let's see what happens. Let's see if we can keep the guys that are butt-fucking us with bombs in the country and continue with more butt-fucking. To me, that just seems a little bit stupid. But, hey, what do I know? I'm just a stupid little guy sitting in his room talking to a webcam and uploading it to YouTube. I, 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 I might know shit, but you really got to ask yourself this question. Who benefits from the U.S. staying in Syria? Yeah. Uh, but anyway, guys, apart from that, let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Do you think this is a false flag attack? If so, why? Do you think that this was actually a ISIS fighter and it was just a lone gunman? Or do you think this is ISIS being completely stupid and going through and doing a terrorist attack when the US is talking about pulling out? Let me know your thoughts are in the comment section below. If this video has been helpful, please smack a like. If you're new to the channel, welcome and subscribe. Apart from that, guys, I'll see you in the next demonetized video from YouTube. Have a great day and enjoy.